And that Reka is in the house, and by golly, she is. It's time for Reka's voice to find out what is on Reka Basu's mind from the Des Moines Register. We just heard some uh, reggae music, just so you know. Later on tonight, Zoo Brew, yeah. the band who's playing, does popular songs reggae style. Is that right? Yes. What's the band? Uh, the, the Sheet. sheet. The sheet. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually thinking of going tonight. You this gotta come might over. be you the night to go. This might be the night come to go. On. A little hey, reggae uh, Can fun. I come hang out with yes, you guys? You yes, look you like can. one of the gang? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll, we'll have you see if you're a lucky duck. We have little ducks bobbing in a pool. If you pick the right lucky duck, you win a prize. You win a free drink. Oh my gosh. Well, get how can I stay away? Yeah. 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 I know. We're just drunk. No, we're just drunk. Yeah. And we have other kind of prizes too, but come on over. It'll be a lot of fun. I don't think it's a big surprise if you pick up the Des Moines Register today and go to the back page that you see what your topic is. Of discussion. I, I know today. almost, I know very little about this, so I'm interested in this. Rachel I mean, I've, Dolezal. I, I've okay. seen the so headline, but you know. It is, I mean, it's the case that everybody is talking yeah. about, but there is a local angle too, which mm. I'll get to oh. in a second. Okay, so, good. what I've written about today is about the Rachel Dolezal case. Now, get people up to speed on this in okay. case they don't know what we're talking As about. As most people probably have heard by now, this was the leader of the Spokane, Washington NAACP chapter who has been passing herself off as an African-American woman for a number of years, and it turns out she's actually not black at all. She's white. Um, she's also had a variety of different stories along the way about her race. She told one reporter earlier this year that she was born in a teepee and had to hunt for her food with a bow and arrow. In fact, she's not Native American either. <laughs> wow. She just sh but saw the show Arrow is what she did. Yeah. I guess that's it. She was over-identifying. Yeah. And, no, it's a very complex and layered story and we'll get into sort of what was going on behind the scenes about that and what implications it has for race in a minute but the Iowa angle is that she has a brother now so she grew up in a family um, a very uh, fundamentalist Pentecostalist oh. family in Montana they later moved to Colorado and she has a biological brother who is a professor of English an associate professor of English at Central College oh, Really? In Pella, yeah. Mm. So, um, and then she had an ad adopt a bunch of adopted brothers and sisters who were black. Now, she has accused. Well, okay, let me back. I'm gonna say she, it's kind of complicated. Yeah, her her brother, the one who's a professor, stands accused of sexual abuse and is going to be going on trial this August for mm. four felony counts of child sexual abuse of a six or seven year old girl that took place back in 2002, 2003. Hmm. He has denied it, um, and the college at this point has not put him on leave or anything. They are aware of the charges, but um, they say, you know, they're gonna let the justice system take its course, and he will be tried in August. The mother, the, though the brother wouldn't speak to me on phone, I tried to reach him to get some sort of a comment. His wife sent me an email saying that they categorically deny all of the charges against him and that it is his sisters who are behind these accusations and what? fraudulently and by sisters one can only assume they're talking about Rachel Dolajar, the one who was put, put you know presenting herself as black when she was actually white but isn't one of her adoptive boys from him as well like it, one of her boys said at 16 I need to be out of this family I want to be in your family right but that doesn't necessarily have to do with the brother right the the, the parents are the ones she claimed were abusive it, it gets but really I thought the brother is now being accused as you said right here yeah. of this and one of her sons came from her brother no no no. Okay. No. And I'm getting no. the story mixed up. It, one of the one of her sons um, came from her parents who adopted a oh, number okay. of black children. I think four black children as well. Okay. But her parents, who she has accused of abuse, right, have also said that she is behind fraudulent allegations against the brother, so that wow. there's no merit to it. Okay. So on the one hand, you know, you have all this conversation about race and what differences it make, what you present yourself as, if you really feel in your heart that you're one thing or another. On the other hand you have these layers of lies and deception that seem to have popped up throughout her life so then there's a question of 
is there some mental illness going on mm -hmm. there? Is she just not tracking with reality? Mm -hmm. Or is there more of a purpose behind some of these allegations that she's making? You know, and are they serving her purposes in some way? And I think that for some folks in the black community who I've spoken to, and certainly I have this feeling too, it is not a form of flattery to, you know, claim to be black because you when you are cashing in on the good parts of that and then not um, and then and then turning against it turning it back on the community when you file a complaint against Howard University for racial discrimination against you as a white person which is uh, what she actually she, did. Wow. she's trying to have it both <laughs> wow. ways holy cow so she attended Howard which is a historically black college, as you yeah. know. Um, based, she got a full scholarship, everything, room, board, full four-year tuition. She had sort of presented herself as black at that time. And somewhere along the line, they pulled the scholarship, and she alleges in a lawsuit it was because they found out that she was white. And therefore, it's a form of discrimination against a white person. The court had said that the lawsuit had no merit, hmm. so out it went. Okay. But I guess the question, the deeper question, which I think is a really interesting one to explore, is can a person so identify with another race or another gender that they can authentically become a part of that? You know, and people are drawing the analogy to Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce right. Jenner, that he did not feel comfortable in his skin as a man and therefore made the transition to a woman as Caitlyn and that he and some people have said to me well why is it that Caitlyn Jenner is being applauded for having done that whereas Rachel Dolezal is being condemned the difference I would say is dishonesty you know she was dishonest right. and she lied about it and he obviously mm. kept the public informed about what he was doing and was very open about that transition so I think deception is a key word here the other thing is, you know, what were her motivations? She has claimed a threat of discrimination throughout her life. She claims that she was attacked by white supremacists, you know? I mean, you can't just jump in and out of races and according to what's convenient and right. flip-flop <clears throat> and then claim, you know, egregious, uh, you know, that, that some egregious offenses have been, have been leveled against you. Because for some black people, for all black people, you grow up in that skin and you have to, if Boy. you're a black parent, mm -hmm. you have to have the talk with your children at a pretty early age that, you know, you are going to attract attention of police and you better mind your P's and Q's and be careful about every step and how you present yourself and how you dress and what you say and how you talk in public and all of that. You know, she didn't have to deal with any of that growing up. She was a blonde haired, blue eyed child. Really? And all of a sudden to sort of step into this role and say, I'm black, you know, it doesn't fly. Now, on the other hand, though, there's an interesting counter-argument, and this is um, Rudy Sims, who recently was retired as the director of the Des Moines Human Rights Department, makes this case that hmm. she did really good work. She raised money. She organized the NAACP chapter extremely well. She expanded it. And so let her identify with whatever she wants to identify with, you know, that black people in the past would pass, would try to pass as whites to get access to, you know, privileges that white people had. Mm -hmm. So why, why isn't it okay for a black person to do the same thing? Well, I would argue that, you know, black people didn't really have a choice because there just were not opportunities available to them at that time as black. So they had to pass if they could. But most people don't have the advantage of going in and out of racial identities. It's too obvious looking at skin color that you're not, that you're right. one thing or another. So she has just sort of used it to her benefit. But I also think the woman is extremely troubled and that you know she has suffered some sort of trauma I, was gonna say, I think we're going to learn more about yeah, this the family story's not over yet. That that is, but if you want to learn more story. it is in today's uh, yeah. Des Moines Register with Rekha Basu thank you so thank much thank you all right it is 853 we'll be right back